how you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday over here in the Atlantic. The only storm that we're dealing with right now is Tropical Storm Philippe, which is meeting a massive front just near Bermuda, just southeast of Bermuda, and this will be curving out to sea as forecasted and will not be a problem for land here, and will generally maintain its intensity the way it looks now. Still a sheared system, probably will not become a hurricane, and will move off towards the northeast. And we have this big trailing front down here, which is starting to look pretty wet down here near the Bahamas, but it's probably going to still be a few days before we can really get something going there in terms of low pressure, because right now this big straight, let me draw this right, this big straight jet stream is not very favorable for significant focusing of low pressure in any area, but we need to get a little trough in here to help perturb that, and then we can get low pressure going, and we'll talk about that in a minute. First of all, I want to talk about what the steering pattern is going to be doing over the next few days for any potential subtropical development that we may have to watch for down here. And what we have right now is we have this sharp trough coming into the western U.S. slowly, but notice there's this big ridge over southern Canada and the northern plains, and this high is going to be very slowly shifting eastward over the coming days. And if we go out to the European Ensemble's day five, it has the ridge right over the eastern seaboard by this time and we have levels down here towards Florida. So we have this cutoff upper low that's split off from the trough and is caught down here. And this is where we could start to see some mischief subtropically if we get low pressure trying to develop here. But notice we have this strong push out of the Pacific that we were talking about yesterday. And I noted that this jet stream in this trough here may be enough to push this ridge far enough east that it traps this down here instead of scooting off to the northeast into this trough, which you can see is leaving by this time. And yes, the model since yesterday I've shifted a little bit eastward with this ridge in line with that idea that this may actually get trapped down here and not be able to escape so easily. So now this may be around for a couple of days and then this ridge starts to shift east slowly and by the time we get out to day seven it is shifted out to here and this trough is now getting into the plane. So now notice that the flow is to the north here, which means that if we have any kind of a system sitting down here, it now has an avenue northward on the western side of this ridge. So if it gets trapped, chances are it's going to come up the western side of the ridge and eventually move northward somewhere into the United States mainland, possibly even offshore, but the United States mainland in here has a great a great chance to get this system if it develops anywhere near Cuba and the Bahamas and then decides to come northward. There's a lot of land in the way there, so there would be a good chance for this to impact us. Now, let's go to the Day 7 European Operational surface map. The colors indicate vorticity or level of spin. It has the low, it brings it up into the Gulf of Mexico here, and then it brings it up towards Pensacola, and it's over Pensacola, Florida by day seven. And notice what the upper level winds look like. If we go over to the upper level wind map, it's a little hard to see, but these purple wind barbs are at the 200 millibar level, and the green lines are the isobars, similar to what we saw on the other image. You can see the surface low is right here over Pensacola where we showed it. Notice the jet stream alignment, though. I'm going to outline the jet stream here at 200 millibars. Here it is. There's a big trough over Florida sitting here. Notice that the jet stream is northwesterly over the surface low. The surface low is here, and the jet stream is northwesterly over it. My question with the model is, does this actually make sense? Because if you're going to have low pressure, wouldn't it make more sense to have it on the eastern side of the trough where there's actually divergence aloft, which means air is taken away, surface pressures are more likely to lower. And the European has a filling low, meaning a weakening low, moving up into this quadrant of the jet stream, which doesn't make, it makes sense that it's filling the low, but it doesn't make sense that the low would be there. It should be more out here towards the eastern part of the trough, at least in my opinion. Now, let's go over to what the GFS shows at day seven at 200 millibars, the same time frame, and notice what we have. We have the jet stream in here, which curves, and we have a trough just east of Florida, which is the same location where we have the trough on the European, but if we go to the surface, the GFS has the low off South Carolina. And that's a big difference from the European, from Pensacola to off of Charleston. Notice the difference, but we have the trough in the upper levels at the same location 
on each model just east of Florida. So the GFS, I think, is seeing the more likely idea that it will follow, what any service load that develops will follow the upper trough in such a way that it will follow the area of greatest upper divergence, which would make sense here due to the mid-level jet stream coming out to the northeast. And you can see the European is actually showing, notice the trough extending northeastward here and the vorticity that is showing up just off the Carolinas coast here by 168 hours. It's actually seeing the tendency for low pressure to be more out here with the area of the jet stream that is more divergent in here and supports low pressure. That would make sense. And we can also look at this on the no gaps by 144 hours. Notice that it has low pressure developing near the northwestern Bahamas. If we go to the 200 millibar winds, notice where the jet stream is in here. It curves and buckles here. The trough is near Florida and it has the surface low beneath the jet stream that is divergent where the air is spreading out and allowing surface pressure to lower. It doesn't have it over here where the upper level winds are converging which would induce rising pressures at the surface. So although, and the no gaps may have this jet stream alignment slightly wrong. It tries to bring the subtropical ridge northward and the no gaps isn't very good with the jet stream alignment but it does have the low pressure where it would make sense to have it as opposed to being all the way back here over Florida on the western side of the upper trough if the upper trough is aligned that way. That doesn't mean that the low couldn't end up in the eastern Gulf of Mexico because it's going to depend on when this ridge moves eastward because the models are in a little bit of disagreement on this and they've had to shift over the last few days. If the ridge is slow in moving eastward and is still over here when we have our low developing then it has a chance to come westward first into the Gulf of Mexico or develop more over here and then move north in the eastern Gulf of Mexico like the current European track shows. If however the ridge is farther east by days 5 through 7 in here then it opens the door for any development in the Bahamas to move straight north right away into the Carolinas or the Florida Peninsula. So our cone of movement here probably looks like development in this area and then a movement either up into the eastern Gulf or up the eastern seaboard, something like this, generally moving north perhaps after a western movement. And this will depend because we've been shifting around, the models have been moving around, so there's still possibilities and we can't guarantee which side of Florida this may be on. However, I think the general idea now is that we're going to get development in the areas that we mentioned and then it's going to move northward, probably on the western side of this ridge as it moves east. The question is exactly where development occurs and the very timing of that ridge in five to seven days that's still a little far out to nail down. Now about the potential strength of this subtropical system, you notice the GFS has this winding up pretty nicely as it moves up towards Charleston. This is under 996 millibars, that last closed isobar there. That's a fairly potent system and that's a solid tropical storm to the point where it's actually becoming warm core. It starts out subtropical but it actually starts to become warm core and if you look at the upper level winds over the system, the surface low is in here and we see the subtropical jet stream up to this off to the south so it's under the cold pool aloft but notice as the mid-level trough comes in here the anticyclonic curvature of the winds to the north of this system and this is in fact a location where this could start becoming warm core as outflow starts coming out of it to the north and it starts warming itself warming the air column above it via tropical processes which are thunderstorms in other words that warm the atmosphere so this is actually the kind of setup if the GFS were to come true here I would fold believe what it's showing at the surface based on the upper level winds aloft. This is a decent place for a subtropical low to be and try to convert to tropical and strengthen and feed back as it moves northward. So depending on the exact orientation of this upper trough, we could actually see a fairly potent system. The atmosphere is actually going to be fairly unstable in this area of the world. So we could see pressures get fairly low and it could be a very broad mess in general. We might just have a lot of wind and rain over here, but we could also get the kind of feedback that this particular GFS run shows where we have a tight ball of convection here. Notice how small that is but with very low pressures and high winds coming in with a fairly true tropical looking system moving up the Gulf Stream. That's a possibility. Same thing in the eastern Gulf if it goes in the eastern Gulf if the upper trough is aligned correctly. So we're going to have to watch the situation fairly closely. And then after this 
after we deal with subtropical mess near Florida and areas north where we're going to have to watch down the road for more development possibly occurring in the Caribbean perhaps of more truly tropical origin because the MJO is still back here still working on getting fully integrated into our area of the world it's starting but it's not there yet and you can see that the models are the models are in unanimous agreement on coming into phase 8 and 1 within the next 10 to 15 days and as it does so the upward motion only gets more and more intense over our area of the world and so we're going to have to watch for development in here all through much of this month for the next two to three weeks we're definitely going to have to watch this area so as we move towards the latter part of this hurricane season alright that's it for today thanks for watching